I just wanted to give another update on bird flu. So we got some um, advice from a couple of vets that we trust. We ran it by our vet who's okay with it and um, some people from the Big Cat Sanctuary Alliance who we very much respect. And they said that right now, ideally, you would boil um, the chicken, basically boil it right now just to get to 165, 170, which is what kills H5N1. And um, we are very lucky in that we are a really, really small sanctuary. We only have four wildcats to feed, so we can do that. These other sanctuaries have hundreds and hundreds of cats and that they just, they can't possibly do it. So we are going to conduct an experiment right now. I have some pork and I have some chicken going on in here that I'm boiling and I have to make sure that it gets up to 165 I'm I'm actually going to try not to boil it. And I have my meat thermometer here and I'm going to keep testing it, get it make sure it's 165, 170 all the way through. And then we're going to just see if the cats will eat it. Um there's a very good chance they won't. They're wild cats, they don't eat cooked meat. Um it's not as nutritious for them, but we have a supplement we can put on it and this is sort of like worst case scenario. Um should bird flu get really bad and it get into the meat that we generally feed them. So this is just an experiment we're doing, and I have no idea how it's gonna go. Probably gonna warm it up a little bit and hope that they're attracted to the warmth of the meat. But yeah, the chickens, this is this is boneless chicken also because in boneless pork, you cannot feed them cooked bones because it splinters and it can cause issues unless you grind them up, which I don't have a industrial grinder. So anyway, we will see how this goes and um, keep you posted if they eat the cooked meat. And um, yeah, just uh, one more thing we're kind of trying to do with this nightmare disease going around.